Today I want to talk about cleaning up uh, figures for paint. Um, I tend to pull out my models from the, the box they came in, stick them into a bag each so that the whole model is contained in one place. Um, it's just a little nuance that I do. Uh, basically this guy is ready to start the main cleanup job. I've already cut him from his um, slaughter base. I use the jeweler saw to cut the uh, slot base off because it gives you a really accurate cut. Um, you can actually turn corners of these things with that really fine blade. Um, and basically you just cut along the bottom of the, the feet like that and then just file it um, to just clean it up a little bit afterwards. You can see it's a pretty clean cut anyway. Um, once I've done that I basically go around removing the mold lines um, which is the, the raised line you'll see all the way around the figure. Um, and to do that I basically follow one really simple rule. Uh, that is basically start somewhere on the model, anywhere you like, and then work your way around in the same direction, following directly from where you just cleaned up. Uh, what that means is you just don't miss anything. There's a few different tools I'll use for that. The main one is these little uh, needle files, and I typically use this little half round guy for most areas. Um, occasionally I'll use this round file, and also this triangular one. Uh, this one's really good for getting into those sort of sharp areas, those corners. Uh, round one's pretty self-explanatory, anything that's got a round on it. And this half round means you've got a flat surface, you've also got a slightly rounded surface, and the edges are fairly rounded as well, so you can get into most areas with this. Next thing I'll use is a scalpel with a fresh blade, basically used for any areas where the files won't get to, and usually I'm just using the very tip of that um, just to quickly whip off that little bit of mold line. Um, next tool I'll use when I'm cleaning a model is trusty old sandpaper. And you can see I fold it up and basically this gets worked over anywhere that I've um, filed the model down just to smooth off uh, what can end up being quite a coarse file using these little needle files. Whenever I'm cleaning a, a metal model and that is to go over it with a wire brush. This one's seen better days. Uh, I've just bought this in a pack of three. Uh, came with a steel brush, uh, this guy, and a, a nylon brush, which I still use, um, basically just to take any rubbish that might be on a model off it. If it's been sitting around for a while, gets a bit of dust on that sort of thing. You can brush it over pretty quickly and get all that off. What the wire brush does is basically just uh, polish the surface. It removes any of the um, white oxidization which you see on these uh, white metals uh, and what you end up with is a, is a much sort of darker looking metal much shinier looking metal to what you started with and it's a perfect surface for your primer coat to adhere to. Alright so I put out a model that I actually haven't started work on the um, Wu Ming there I'd already removed the base tab I'd already gone through and clipped off any major bits and I uh, wanted to talk about starting off a figure from scratch. So I've got this authorized bounty hunter here. Uh, you can see bits like the gun. There's quite a lot of sort of injection parts and stuff where they've pushed the metal into the mold that needs to be taken off. Um, and there's these little, um, the finer ones, which are basically used to, to push any excess air out so you don't get holes in your model. Um, basically to start off with, I'm gonna take off any uh, of the injection ports like this. Just clip them with a pair of sharp clippers. Okay, so the base tab on the authorized bounty hunter is quite small. Um, you could technically have a go at that with your clippers. Um, a big piece of metal like that is probably going to damage them though. Uh, also, there's a real danger if I attack that with clippers that they're gonna sort of slide into the foot and take out half the foot with it. With it. Um, so even for a small piece like that, I'm still typically gonna take out the jeweler saw and just cut that out. Um, I have pieces of cork and things like that lying around on my desk typically uh, which are a great way to sort of just hold the model in place without damaging it. You can push it right into that cork in this case. Um, it's not going to damage any of that part of the model. It's going to hold it nice and steady and I can cut into the cork and it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm basically just going to angle it so I can tell that I'm cutting in the right direction. Hold it down firmly and just start cutting along the bottom of the foot. If you angle it away from the foot a little bit to start, you can sort of 
start cutting into the tab if you need to, like I did there. And then just work really slow and careful. Um, these blades are very sharp, they're very fine. They'll work through a piece of metal pretty quickly without really putting any effort into it. You just have to make sure you've got the right angle. You can see I'm pulling it out and checking that the angle's right as I go. Now what you'll get typically with a jeweler's saw is a nice clean cut. You might want to file it slightly if you've got a little nook out of it like I did there. Um, but basically the foot's ready to go. Um, I'll put a pin in there um, to attach it to the base. Some people also actually file the base tab into a pin shape. Um, I don't typically do that, basically just because I like a long pin because of the way I attach a model to the cork. So you can see the pins on the uh, crane agent here are going into the cork probably to about here. I'm going to put the bounty hunter to the side for now. I'm going to go back to the Wu Ming. Um, he's got some nice big surface areas which should show up a bit better on the camera. Um, basically I pick an area on the model that I want to start with and then just work my way around in the same way until I get back to that point. Uh, like I said before that means that I'm not going to miss anywhere. Um, now in terms of starting point, it doesn't really matter where you start, I typically tend to start on a, on a leg uh, and basically just again gently let the tool do the work, um, file away that slight raised area on the model where the two halves of the mould have come together. I'm not pressing very hard here, there's two reasons for that. I don't want to remove anything accidentally if I slip, um, so I'd like to go over each mould line several times to get rid of it anyway. Uh, and the other one, the other reason there is that I want to make sure that um, I'm not uh, scoring deep grooves uh, in the pattern of the, the coarseness of the file there. Um, these files remove material pretty effectively uh, and they can make a mess of it as well if you're not careful. You'll see here I'm also sort of working over the whole area, not just getting the mold line off and that's basically to make sure that I'm on a round surface like this I'm not leaving a flat spot where I've just taken the mold line off. Next job I like to do on a cleanup is basically to go through and sand any areas. Um, you can see especially on the, the chest here where the uh, file has left a bit of scoring. Um, the sandpaper I just basically run across that and it polishes it right up and removes any of those deep scores that the file can put in there, start running the uh, wire brush over it. I just tend to do it by hand. Um, a lot of people like to use uh, a rotary tool like a Dremel on this as well. You can get wire rotary tool e extensions. Uh, I've done that as well. I'm not against it, but um, I found it can be pretty uncomfortable with the wire bristles falling out, whereas these ones just fall on your lap. Um, when a Dremel's doing it, it'll fly everywhere. So wear eye protection for that one for sure. Um, but basically just rough up the whole model, um, go over the whole thing. Uh, the most uncomfortable part about doing this by hand is that sometimes these wire bristles will stick in your fingers. They can be painful. Uh, but you can see pretty instantly there, not going over it a heap, um, what difference that makes to the look of the model. And it's those little scratches we're putting into the surface which helps the paint stick as well as the glue for any parts we're gluing on. And it takes absolutely no time to do this. You can see using the wire brush also it's basically um, scratching little particles of the, of the metal off. Um, so you'll get dirty hands from doing this as well. I'm always going to wash my hands before I do anything else on a model. Alright, so I've cleaned up the body of the Wu Ming um, and his arm. That goes on like that. I'm probably going to pin that in place. Uh, I'm not going to go through and actually pin it in the video because it'll be a bit boring. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about the pinning process. Um, I just use a pin vise. Uh, fairly small bit. My pin of choice is usually this high tensile sprung steel. You can buy this from hobby, stop, hobby shops. You can see it doesn't really bend uh, without putting a heap of effort into it. It's very tough, very hard, um, and basically holds everything in place really well. Uh, bringing the good old crane back, you can see that I've pinned his sub-assemblies. And I do tend to 
paint in a sub-assembly like this um, just because I don't want say the uh, gun arm here getting in the way for instance but because it's all pinned together I can at any point in time essentially just assemble the model and because they're nice clean pins actually holds in place on the model pretty much without any effort and certainly no glue so I can double check things like if, if I have I painted that area in under the arm enough and that sort of thing uh, by just placing the arm in place. This also gives you an idea about how long I like to put my pins into the model. So you can see I've, I've got a fair distance on the head braid there and the arm certainly has a fair bit of play on that. Part of that is because I can now pin that into a cork and actually work on that.